Ladies and gentlemen, Mexico uh, is a country uh, where we at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy see a huge opportunity when it comes to cultural diplomacy. For us, I think where really cultural diplomacy can have a tremendous impact are cases where the identity of a country doesn't necessarily match with the perception of that country, which doesn't necessarily match with the presentation of that country. And I think there, very often, cultural diplomacy can help uh, when it comes to fighting stereotypes, uh, when it comes to supplementing partial information, when it comes to, it comes to actually uh, complementing uh, partial information. So in that sense, I think it's really exciting that we have the chance right now to give a spoke focus to Mexico. I'm happy that the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy has had a great partnership with Mexico through not only the embassy in Berlin, but also ProMexico, or ProMexico, uh, the organization also working uh, to increase the economic bridges between Mexico and the rest of the world. We're proud to work with ProMexico in the United States as well as in Germany. So again, I'm, I'm happy to continue the tradition of Mexico here. Uh, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Jamie Garcia Amaral has a fascinating CV and experience, I think too extensive to really do justice to, but I will try to mention some of the highlights uh, just so you have a sense uh, for the great experience that he's bringing with him today. Uh, His Excellency was born on October 21st, 1952 in Guadalajara, uh, Jalisco. He studied sociology at the Faculty of Political and Social Sciences of the National Autonomous University of Mexico and at the Institute for Social Economic Development at the University of Paris, France. At the, I will switch this, thank you. Uh, uh, at the Institute of High Studies of Social Sciences in Paris, Institut des Autitudes, uh, he continued his studies in urban sociology. From 1992 until 1996, he was commissioned by the Mexican Foreign Ministry to the National Council for Culture and the Arts as Coordinator of International Affairs. So this is maybe where the interest began in terms of culture and also cultural diplomacy uh, as really being a pivotal role uh, in the foreign affairs of Mexico. Uh, He then served as Director General of the Cultural Affairs uh, Office in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From 1998 until 2002, he was the Consul General of Mexico and Montreal, Canada. After that, he returned to the Mexican Foreign Ministry to serve as Director General for Europe. From 2004 until 2010, he served as the Consul General of Mexico to Barcelona. And from March 2010, he was appointed as Ambassador of Mexico to the Republic of Turkey, also with accreditation to Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, with his residence here in Ankara. The topic that he has chosen today, cultural diplomacy, Fighting Stereotypes to Promote Dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a very, very heartfelt and sincere welcome to His Excellency, Ambassador Jamie Garcia Amaral. Thank you. Thank you for being here this evening. Um, I would like, first of all, to thank the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy and to Top University to host this meeting. Um, as you hear uh, recently, my, my career was quite uh, on the field of cultural affairs in, in diplomacy. And um, I will tell you some personal experience. I hope I will not uh, be uh, too, um, too bored you <laughs> to hear that. But, um, I would like to share with you this, uh, this, uh, these ideas. I would like also to, to felicitate this Institute of Cultural Diplomacy for their commitment to promote a more peaceful world and to find effective ways to solve conflicts. Certainly diplomacy is a strategic tool to promote dialogue in many ways. In this session, I would like to be more specific and talk about how we can use cultural diplomacy to achieve a better understanding of the other. How we can fight prejudice and stereotypes that are obstacles to communication between people from different national backgrounds. Of all the branches of diplomacy, Cultural diplomacy is more clearly a channel of communication between different nationals, cultural traditions. Uh, Look look at the cultural diplomacy in the very comprehensive definition. It's the main goal to show the public in a country what the artistic community, community of other countries living, thinking, feeling, and ultimately producing. It's not 
certainly an easy task. Culture is a living being, and as, and as a cultural diplomat, it is hard to capture this living aspect and convey it to the audiences of a country with a different backgrounds. On the other hand, it's easy to fall uh, prey to temptation to uh, focusing on feeding the old images these audiences have of the country where a diplomat comes from. This strategy is also valid and uh, it can be effective in its own way in facilitating dialogue through promoting the knowledge of the other, but it has some limits and we better be aware of them. I'll try to address uh, this later on. In my career as a Mexican diplomat, I have worked, as I was telling you specifically, on the cultural issues for more than 15 years. And I believe, and I have to tell you the first stereotype that I found in my way was, um, interestingly enough, the one about the cultural attaché, the cultural agent, the cultural uh, official working in an embassy itself. Many people think that the main areas of expertise of diplomats dealing with these matters are vernissage and canapés. The cultural attaches uh, are seen in, as a snob even in, the, in their own colleagues, who in all fairness aren't free of suspicion either. To be honest, what attracted me to this field weren't bad the bad wine serving in opening ceremonies. In an early stage of my career, I found out that among the diverse tasks assigned to a diplomat, cultural issues were the most exciting. Now, after 35 years in this career, I still feel that way. Cultural diplomacy connects different cultural traditions and shapes the image each of them has uh, the, of the other. For that reason, it's not only entertaining and exciting, but also it's an important responsibility. In the case of my country, the promotion of culture has always been and has been part of our foreign policy since uh, since the very beginning of the 20th century, just after the Mexican Revolution. And that, is a very, that has been a very important tool for us, for work in diplomacy. If this work is done properly, it can be an invaluable contribution to build a peaceful env environment and to help solving conflicts. When we make cultural traditions gain a deeper knowledge of each other, they are better prepared to manage disagreements in a constructive way and to commit to peace building. How can we achieve that? Fighting against those immutable and caricature images of the other, we call stereotypes, is one of the way of doing so. At this point, it's important to reflect upon a central issue of our talk. For many observers, what's relevant in, what is relevant in the work of a cultural diplomat is the quality of the artistic expressions he's able to bring from his home country. From this point of view, the artistic expressions are the ones responsible for defining a message and sending it to the audiences. The work of the cultural diplomat is limited to the logistics or bringing a particular exhibit or music band, and I totally disagree with this opinion. I strongly believe that the job of attaché 
cultural attaché, goes beyond the logistics. He should participate actively in choosing the message that has to be passed as well as the channel to deliver it. This brings the cultural diplomat back to the center stage in the fight against prejudice. His contributions to a better understanding of the other is a real tool of peace building. The professional of this field must have accurate knowledge of what the audiences think about this country, his country. His knowledge must include a list of the cultural cliches attached to his country, and especially those who are dangerous and could encourage confrontation. With such information, the diplomat has to took uh, the culture of uh, his country and select those manifestations that can contribute to a more complex and real understand, understanding among his audience. By doing so, we can be able to influence the views that need to be changed in the countries where we are posed. This is what I like to call the packaging process, which is the most important task in the hands of a cultural attaché. It means that the relevant content in cultural diplomacy lays in the artistic representations shown to the public, but also in the way uh, it is presented. The choices of where to show an exhibition, when to show it, and for how long shouldn't be regarded as plain logistic questions. The decisions we make on these issues can be fundamental part of the message we are sending. If we look at cultural diplomacy as a means to promote dialogue, and in this regard as an important element of peace building, we have to bear in mind this objective through this packaging process. More specifically, we have to identify those stereotypes that prevent different countries to communicate uh, in an effective way. Then we can fight them by underlying those features in the culture of a specific country that are being neglected in the minds of the audiences abroad. The cultural attaché must assume his position in the middle of an exchange of messages between the tradition that he represents and the one in which he is functioning. In his daily work, he produced valuable insights about the customs and behaviors of the people among which he lives, influencing the flow of information on both directions. His efforts should focus on turning this simple exchange of information into a real <clears throat> dialogue. But what is implied in this shift? For a dialogue to exist, the message exchange in it must be meaningful and credible for each party involved. Therefore, it is required to know what's important and what is believable for them. The cultural diplomat has to present his country as a relevant and as trustworthy partner. From my own experience, the best way to succeed on this showing a convincing image of our countries is a living and therefore changing tradition. This dynamic element is a powerful weapon in the struggle against prejudice and cliches. It is for that reason our best ally in fighting them. We have to show the living forces underlying our traditions, our tra artistic expression. We have to privilege diversity, diversity in order to avoid the simple game of substituting old preconceived ideas by new ones. We have to succeed in convincing the audiences that our culture isn't a caricature, that it breathes and it can't be expressed 
and simplistic ways. Every tradition offers a specific working material to achieve this goal. In my career, the very origin of Mexico as a nation has provided me with substance and inspiration in the struggle against some negative preconceived ideas. My country succeeded in embracing diversity at the core of its identity. It is home uh, of a great number of ancient civilizations whose cities and artistic legacies still whispered to us the secrets of an old grandeur. Mexico is also the painful product of the encounter between the old American civilization and the Spanish tradition brought with the conquerors in the 15th century, which integrate in itself the values of different cultural and religious traditions, such as those belonging to Muslim and Jewish populations that coexist in Spain for centuries. More recently, in the 20th century, new flows of immigrants have made their contributions to the cultural life of my country. Specifically, I think of those who came to Mexico from uh, fleeing Europe during the World Wars, the Spanish exiles during the Civil War, and uh, our brothers and sisters from Latin America who moved to Mexico when they were having a difficult time in their own countries. Mexico has succeeded in integrating the perspective of the other in the definition of itself. This is not an easy legacy, of course. It is the result of violent conflicts that in the past put face to face different traditions. It is obvious that many problems arise when such a diverse heritage tries to find a peaceful coexistence for its components. But this acceptance of diversity has fueled a rich artistic tradition that is always there to make dialogue possible. And when we see how these forces play at the international level, we can find some parallelism. Cultural difference between countries are often seen as a risk and as a source of undesirable conflict. They might be so if we approach culture as a list of stereotypes that we use to describe the lives of the others. But once we acknowledge the cultural tradition of the other is, and that the other is like ours, subjected to multiple dynamics and the result of complex history we open our minds to real understanding. If we uh, difference as a thread of our way of life, we will have conflict as the most likely outcome. But there is an alternative. Difference can also be seen as a, an opportunity to learn about the others and about ourselves. Difference is a fundamental and unique element we can contribute to enriching diversity in the world. In the international arena, these principles are present in the initiative of the Alliance of Civilizations, specially supported by Turkey and the United Nations. With this project, a number of countries want to steer away from the clash of civilizations that some apocalyptic intellectuals have anticipated. The countries involved in the project have agreed that the only alternative to a clash is an alliance to promote mutual understanding between the civilization. A Mexican colleague once pointed out more than a clash of civilizations that we face today is a clash of mutual ignorance. To change this, we need, of course, much more than cultural diplomacy. But the work of the cultural diplomat is essential in this strategy and it could have a positive influence in, on other actors. To summarize, understanding the other and acknowledging his or her right to exist 
is transcendental to start a dialogue. And dialogue is the only acceptable way out of the conflicts that will emerge from diversity. Thus, our goal as cultural diplomats shouldn't be cancelling conflicts, but opening the channels for dialogue. By doing so, when conflict takes place, we can use these channels to find a solution, a solution that is acceptable for the parties involved. Our mission is to establish, through cultural cooperation, an environment of mutual recognition within which the images we have of the others are constantly under revision. In a situation of this kind, stereotypes cannot live long. The secure, to secure this environment, we have to show that there are people creating art in our countries, people questioning their identities, confronting aesthetic principles, facing uncertainty, people looking for beauty, people who are in towards creating art, or in one word, living. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you very, very much, and in particular for discussing also a number of specific examples of cultural diplomacy, such as Alliance of Civilizations. Uh, but I will refrain from asking you a question for now. I want to first give a chance to the participants. Any questions or comments that you have for the ambassador uh, about Mexico or about also his vision for cultural diplomacy? Who would like to go first? And don't be shy. The graveyard slot is over today. The other ambassador had that, although I know it's the end of the day of the three-day conference. But would you like to ask any questions? Or? Yes, OK. No questions. And then if you could please stand and also briefly introduce yourself. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Moritz Perf, student of philosophy and culture. Um, I just, I mean, I had the feeling that you feel deeply, maybe for Mexican art, probably, as a cultural attaché. I mean, what is your experience? How can people in a different context appreciate and evaluate the art that you present? Can you can can you repeat me the first part of your question? You think that I feel uh, deeply <laughs> pro and probably understand deeply Mexican art. Mm -hmm. So I mean, presenting it somewhere else. Uh, where the needs are different, where aesthetic struggles of aesthetic principles and of political forms are different. How can people relate uh, to the art you present? Is it just something exotic? Of, uh, well, I think we, we were talking about the stereotypes. Obviously, we have some of them, unfortunately. But I think one of the, of the tasks of a cultural agent or cultural attaché or cultural uh, official is to to present the uh, new visions of, of a country. I mean, uh, in my experience, uh, when people think in cultural, in culture and arts in Mexico, first of all, they think in Frida Kahlo, which is a very important artist, certainly. But the... Um, in Mexico, we're still doing art or painting or composing or whatever, or creating. We're still doing that in this very day, this day. So one of my, my I mean, my, my goals as a cultural responsible, uh, making the image of Mexico abroad, was just exactly to, to, pro to promote and to, to create a, a, a a new image, a modern image, it's what is happening, which is not always, I mean, I'm, I'm not putting a, a value, opinion is good or bad, this what is happening, which is always um, the answer of the society of the moment. Okay, now I see we have a few other questions. Uh, I'm not sure who's first. We'll start ladies first, and then we'll come to the front. Um, thank you for your speech and thanks for coming here because I'm really interested in Mexico. I'm studying political sciences in Istanbul right now. My name is Lotte. And I was wondering, as you mentioned, the diversity which is enriching your country and the immigrants who came to Mexico. I was actually wondering, as I've had the chance to enjoy some of the Zapatista art in Germany, where some people are 
um, showing uh, exhibitions. I've listened to some songs. Even in a university class, we've discussed the literature. I would like to know your idea about how the Zapatistas are enriching the Mexican culture. Just um, your opinion on the situation, because it's not always easy, and mm -hmm. it's definitely the other, maybe. It can be considered the other, comparing to the Mexican main culture. No, I think one of the most important things that happened with this movement of Zapatistas was to put Mexico face to face to a part of our country what mainly or the most of the people didn't didn't see it. And this is a very big and a great achievement of this movement. Uh, the fact that we all Mexicans realize that 10% of our population still in the indigenous regions of Mexico and have to be treated in the dignity and have to to have to 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 take advantage if I may say of the economic achievements of the I don't know 20 30 years it, and this is the, the very important thing and in terms of identity it's very important what they do very, very important. And I was thinking in identity, if I may make up just a little poses, uh, regarding the questions we, we heard about Arab countries or uh, the identity in, in South Africa. Uh, it's very interesting, and I'd let this on the table because that will be a matter for another uh, session, but uh, it's very interesting that uh, the, the region where Mexico is, as you know, we are in the south of the North America, the, the north of uh, South America. Well, we are Latin Americans, that is for sure, and this is how we feel. But all this part of the continent, from Mexico to the Patagonia, we have a very strong identity that we can say the Latin American identity. We are almost four. 400 million people in this area of the, of the and even though we have differences be, among us i mean an argentinian and a mexican or a chilean and colombian but we share many many things we share well history religion language even though brazil speaks portuguese but it's a la it's it's an iberic language so we can communicate very easy and it's very interesting to see that how this part of the world is really related but a kind of, in French you say, fil conducteur, eh? that uh, unify us from Mexico to the, to, the, to the Patagonia. This is, in terms of identity, I think it's interesting to, to think uh, uh, about this. Two more questions, first in the front and then... Good afternoon, my name is Konrad Kierzyński. I work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Poland. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, thank you for your very inspirational presentation on the role of culture in uh, doing diplomacy. And actually the question I was about to ask uh, was partly uh, answered by you in the, while referring to the previous question. Uh, I was thinking about the uh, Mexico as a part of the Latin American world and uh, you've said that uh, there is this cultural diplomacy is as it should be uh, a part of the strategy for in the Mexican MFA um, I was wondering if there is any cooperation or any strategy of Latin American countries as a whole region uh, to uh, to promote yourself, to promote your region mm. as a whole in other parts of the world. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I mean, uh, when I was in, in charge of international affairs of what is our Ministry of Culture, I was participating regularly. We have a mechanism among all the Latin American countries who uh, where are represented all the ministers of culture of, of the region. So we can exchange experiences, we can uh, make some kind of programs or whatever, but does exist and, 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 and it's a very 
uh, it's a very good thing. I mean, it's more or less active depending the times and depending the uh, the economic uh, um, problems or whatever. But we have this channel of communication, absolutely. Yes. I wanted to ask a related question, and then I see there's two more hands in the front, so I'll give the microphone to them in a second. Uh, as I see the evolution of cultural diplomacy, I'm seeing a tendency, and I'm optimistic about this, that it's getting less unilateral, more multilateral. You were just talking about also the Latin American region. Uh, you also made reference to alliance of civilizations. Uh, so I just wanted to ask your opinion. I mean, as we, let's say, imagine creatively 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, where do you see cultural diplomacy? Do you think there's a chance for organizations, whether they're regional organizations or global organizations, to actually be doing the cultural diplomacy work for us on a multilateral level, as opposed to the unilateral past that cultural diplomacy has had more or less up until today? Well, I think definitely the, all this uh, mechanism, including obviously the UNESCO and uh, it, in our case uh, uh, the OES uh, has as well as part of cooperation on, on cultural and academic uh, things. What, what I will say that inspires me your 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 word is that more and more we will be we will see certainly cultural diplomacy as part of the public diplomacy i mean in in the in the sense that that will be important that will happen that will happen in the multilateral fora for culture or education or whatever but very important will be what is happening outside of this classical official circles, but the societies, the, the, the contacts between people, between creators, between artists. I mean, a lot of things happen now in the world, all over the world, and they and these things happening because people want to happen, to, to be, to be, uh, I mean, to, to create. And the creators of different parts of the world, they get together not because the UNESCO or the whatever organism, multilateral, uh, call them and say, come and no, they, they, they are together because they want to do things together. I think this is m more the, the way I think. Nevertheless, I, I'm, a, I'm a, I convinced, as I told in my presentation, that the cultural diplomacy is a very important tool for a foreign policy. And the case of Mexico has been uh, very successful, I mean, I may say. Thank you for that. There are two ladies who have been waiting in the front, and then we have to conclude. Uh, we'll start here. And Thank you. Uh, yes, Your Excellency, I'm just a freelance writer, but I have served in Turkish government as a protocol assistant to the president in the former, in the past days. So my f question is, you have stated that your government, Mexican government, uh, has been using cultural diplomacy as a tool, uh, and it's a part of your foreign policy, and I really greatly appreciate this effort uh, a lot. But I would like to know, for instance, in the world, we have, uh, I don't know, just to remind, Václav Havel, or some other writers, you know, mm -hmm. some intellectuals uh, in this field who are presidents, prime ministers, uh, later in their careers, you know, but they began as uh, maybe writers or poets or whatever. In your government, uh, do you, what sort of a criteria uh, do you look for for those people who will be appointed as cultural attaches? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your inspirational uh, session. Well, I have two, two opinions regarding that. Being part of the foreign service, I mean, the career foreign service, what I want and what I always try to, to convey to my superiors is the, the importance to have a specific corps in the ministry um, being and dealing specifically with cultural and academic matters uh, I, as, as we have for the multilaterals. I mean, it's, like, it's a kind of different clan. I mean, it's people in, that, that will be for me, a, a very important thing. We, we try to do it, but unfortunately we didn't have uh, maybe the economic resources or the human resources to do uh, that all the time. On the other hand, we, we, we have taken, we are still inviting intellectuals and artists to become cultural attaches. Uh, and I think they have been a very good um, supporters of that. But in, in, in some part of my, I mean, it's very important to have something like Octavio Paz working in, in embassy in Paris in the 50s, that's for sure. 
but um, in, in the more recent times, uh, I think when, when you put an artist which is whatever, I mean a writer or a musician or painter, or whatever, in, in a position that he, 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 he has to work and deal with a day-by-day -day bureaucracy because that's what we do. Let me let me tell you an, an anecdote, very very brief. When I leave Paris, I was a uh, cultural attaché in Paris, and I leave my post because a very well known um, writer was appointed to this point. It was a good friend of me, but I, I stay there for two weeks just to to, to pass the you no. Know? And uh, at the first, at the end of the first day or two days. He asked me, as he tell me, are you sure that I have to do all this? And I say, yes, you have to do all this. Because we have to answer the phone, and you have to write notice, whatever, and you have to write well, reports, and you have to go there and there. So what I, what I, meant, what I, what I, what I want to say is that sometimes we lose by, by two sides. We lost, we lost an artist, a creator, because he doesn't have the time to create, and we lose the opportunity to, I mean, to, to have someone prepare for that kind of job. So that's what I think we should prepare people for that kind of job, which is people not really involved with the creation, but what we can say uh, um, cultural administrators, maybe. It sounds not very good, but something like that. A very important question and answer. Actually, we could do a conference just on that topic. So, but again, I'll refrain from asking other questions. The final question, please. Yeah. Um, uh, good afternoon. I'm Veronica from University of Exeter, UK. And I have a question because um, since um, we started this, com uh, this uh, conference and talk, uh, we talk about the importance of dialogue um, as a tool. Um, and I do believe in this, and I think it's very important, um, together with other kind of tool. And um, as my personal experience, I'm trying to, I try to organize many seminars these years as I, I set up a society that is called the Coexistence Study Society. So I'm the president, and I try to put together two sides um, through many talk and events interdisciplinary, so this means uh, political, historical, geography, art, everything was included. But I found extreme, extremely difficult because many sides are not ready for dialogue yet. Uh, when I approach them, um, they, reply, they reply to me, if we come is for protest, if we come is for um, protect us. So I think there are steps before to sort out before speaking of dialogue as a just a, i actually i don't have actually a question or maybe an advice or suggestion no, I think, to uh, how to cope with this uh, problem I thank think, you i think you are completely right and and, and because uh, again prejudice and because we people i think the, the the worst thing is the lack of information the lack of knowledge and people are uh, afraid of the other still are afraid of the other so it's quite difficult so you have to to have a kind a certain attitude to 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 get into a, di a dialogue and the first thing is to, to to respect the other and to know the other and then you can dialogue with him if you don't know him and you fear him you cannot do it i think the the, the, the question is better knowledge and better openness I would agree. We say at the Institute it's really about helping to educate, enhance, and sustain relationships to try to get to a point where we at least have dialogue, understanding, and trust. We don't have to agree with each other, but at least we trust each other. So I think in that sense, that might be a goal worth uh, working towards in terms of the future of cultural diplomacy. So thank you very, very much. We really appreciated having you here, not only as ambassador of Mexico, but really as someone who's dedicated much of your life to exactly the topic of this conference, cultural diplomacy. So we look forward to collaborating with you in the future. And I'd ask everyone to please join me in expressing our gratitude to His Excellency Ambassador Jemek. Garcia Amaral, thank you.